Lockheed's chief engineer would later recall that Art E. Flock, who was on the supercarrier to witness the tests, had stated, quote, The sea was pretty big that day. I was up on the captain's bridge. I watched a man in the ship's bow as that bow must have gone up and down 30 feet. The ship was sped up to 10 knots to fight the wind direction and to reduce yaw motion. When the plane landed, it had 40 to 50 knots hitting the nose. Art E. Flock also recalled, quote, That airplane stopped right opposite the captain's bridge. It was cheering and laughing. There on the side of the fuselage, a big sign had been painted that said, Look Ma, no hook. The rest of the tests were conducted in moderately rough seas about 500 nautical miles, or 930 kilometers off the coast of Boston and the North Atlantic Ocean. These November 8th tests broke the record for the largest and heaviest plane to ever land on an aircraft carrier, a record that still stands. To carry out the landing, Flatley put the propellers in reverse pitch while he was still 10 or 15 feet in the air to land. At the moment of touchdown, the Hercules was placed in full reverse and brought to a stop in 270 feet. For that first landing, the Hercules weighed 85,000 pounds, but the ambitious testing required increasing the weight up to 121,000 pounds. For the maximum weight tests, the crew used 745 feet to take off and 460 feet to land. By the end of the tests, the aircraft was able to even take off from the spot on the deck where it had landed last. At that point, the Hercules wingtip was only 15 feet away from the ship's control island, leaving no margin for any mistakes. No room for error. After the record for the biggest aircraft to land on the carrier was broken, the Navy realized that while it was indeed possible to land a Hercules on a supercarrier, doing so would be impractical and unfeasible for regular operations. The room for error was simply too narrow. Furthermore, the Hercules was too big to fit on the elevators or to stay in the hangars, which meant traveling by sea with it would require significant modifications, if it could even be done. 